gosh, that was up this weekend. And yeah. Have you heard anything moving about that? Fed. Well, she's a misfed daughter, but she has not had any yet. But um, she cleared out all the taxes and has paid up all the taxes and now all in her name. Oh, wow. Well. This other couple not, but they went, they've been going. No, I haven't heard anything. There's no way anybody can call uh, they, They'd have to, obviously. Daniel, you know, so the thing we, now. The plan. Well, we, uh, yeah, oh, that's um, Talk to them about. Hello. 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 Yeah. We thought we were going to have know. the girls last week for a few I'll days. try to let you all know, obviously, if, if somebody does, we'll. They're out on Fear Spring Break, and um, Kylie has to be out of town. Oh, yeah. So, um, in the middle of this weekend, I told Jim. Hey, guys. How are you doing? How are you With, um, with Nick, the, the two older ones. They're, re they're really tight. That one there. Oh, no, uh, he could probably just prop it up in front of the seats there. You know it's on here. Uh, I'm saying to the landscape. They first come across each other for the weekend. They hug. When they leave, they hug. Oh, between the residences. And Nick spends the night. Another so 50 feet from the parking. Have a sleepover. Cousin sleepover, so he spent the night and did well. But uh, overall, non impervious area is less than 50 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, less than 40 percent. So, uh, we go pretty early. We start early. Yeah. Our <laughs> it's hard to reach. It is. It is. Yeah, you could probably there just drop it one, up there. One time when I looked up and I thought, oh my gosh, it's, it's so much later. It feels so much later than that. We've been here so much longer. <laughs> I want to call the March 17th, 2016 meeting of the Fair Municipal Planning Commission to order. We start out with a citizen's forum. If anybody is here tonight who has questions or comments that don't relate to any of the items on the agenda, they can ask those now. Anybody on the Planning Commission have anything they'd like to say? Yes, if you look down this way, you may see somebody that you haven't seen before, and that's because she is new, and this is uh, Roseanne Kyle, our newest Planning Commissioner. Welcome. Uh, you're going you're gonna to have a lot of fun with a lot of late nights. <laughs> <laughs> you... Uh, you want to say anything, if so, if so? No, I just said that I've been through a few late ones already on the other side of the aisle. So. Oh. <laughs> this will be a little tougher. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Thank you very much for the opportunity to serve on this commission and with all Thanks your Thanks for agreeing folks. to it. We appreciate the fact that you're willing to take the time that, that uh, is involved with it. And, and everybody is very nice, and no one has uh, accosted us in the parking lot yet. So you can feel free to uh, to go go out in the parking lot after it's over. Great, thank you. <laughs> um, approval of the agenda. Um, there's one thing that I, we uh, would propose for you. Um, Items six and seven, if it's okay with you all, we would propose to swap those out when we originally put together the packet <clears throat> and the agenda. Uh, we were just going to treat number seven with PowerPoint presentation, but we actually created some poster sheets in the back, so we'll, uh, we're planning to just uh, kind of reconvene in the back for that agenda item number seven, and it might transition better if that's actually um i mean item number six um is would transition better if it were the last item actually on the agenda instead of item number seven if that's okay with you all swap seven, so swap, six. Swap seven would be up where six is and six down to seven yeah okay um i move for approval of the revised agenda all those in favor aye 
Approval of the minutes for the February 18th, 2016 meeting. Does anybody have any changes or corrections? Do I have a motion? Move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, discussion and public hearing on a request to amend the 2012 Comprehensive Land Use Plan for Parcel 117, Tax Map 142, located at the intersection of North Campbell Station and Heron Road, approximately 4.5 acres from very low density residential to civic slash institutional. Peter Falk for Autumn Care 2 LLC applicant. Okay, this item. As you all know, we've talked about this property for a number of planning commission meetings. Um, and uh, this specific request involves uh, an amendment to the future land use map uh, for this property at the south intersection of Heron Road and North Campbell Station Road. Um, the current land use designation uh, is very low density residential. The applicant is requesting a civic institutional designation. Um, there are some existing parcels uh, on North Campbell Station Road that have a civic, uh, have the uh, civic institutional land use designation. Uh, the library parcel, the school, and the church, the churches on Jamestown uh, to the south are all civic institutional so their request is not inconsistent with some of the other land uses along this section of North Campbell Station Road. Um, the staff feels that actually a civic institutional land use uh, is consistent with the general surrounding plan of development. There, there are some residential structures along that section of Campbell Station Road but there are also some on the larger parcels, um, kind of institutional uh, type buildings like the library, uh, the church uh, to the north there, the school and the park, all basically institutional. Uh, so we do feel that the civic institutional land use request, um, you know, we do support that. Planning Commission, have any questions or comments for Mark? Mm -hmm. Okay, the applicant. Hello, my name is Peter Falk, uh, 9122 Links View Drive, Knoxville. Uh, just a couple quick comments, I guess. Uh, we took a lot of the comments that were concerns over the past, since last May, into consideration with the design of our facility. Uh, the architect did draw a preliminary drawing uh, of the proposed facility uh, for that site. Um, some of the things that we took into consideration were uh, things that I think are currently uh, being considered in most municipalities that are uh, developing and wanting to grow their communities. The, the issue of connectivity, uh, the community, uh, as much green space as possible, uh, the low impact, uh, which we've achieved all that with this design. Um, that uh, footprint of the building and parking lot is actually less than 40% of the property. And, and I know the new S1 zoning had a restriction of 60. So uh, we think it's a very low impact, very appropriate project for that location. Uh, we took into consideration uh, the parking being in the back and uh, hidden as much as possible. Um, of course, the design standards, uh, that was one thing with the S1 is that we will be held to the design standards versus a residential that doesn't have that type of restriction to it. Uh, the type of landscaping, uh, we did uh, work with uh, the neighbor, immediate neighbor, and we're willing to, she, if she preference, has, has a preference for a certain plant type in that buffer zone, I'm certainly willing to, to include that. Uh, the lighting, uh, we did do the low projection lighting. Uh, from what the architect tells me, it's built, mounted, mounted to the building, and it, uh, some lights reflect up, but these are hooded, so it reflects down. I don't know the exact angle uh, of the lighting. Um, those are the, I think Mark has a photograph of the, of the type of lighting that projects down and not over. 
Uh, also, the slope of that property uh, would be a little bit below the immediate neighbor's property. Uh, so the, the 50 foot of buffer plus the parking would slope where the building itself would actually be well below the eye level. Uh, we're proposing a single story uh, facility. Um, there is one caveat to that. Uh, the way the property does slope in the back, uh, the architect may recommend that we have a little bit of a basement type footing in the back so we don't have to excavate down so much towards the creek. Uh, we could just install a taller uh, footing wall type uh, arrangement in the back, but of course that, the way it's angled, you would not see that from the street. It would be angled back towards the center of the property. And um, I did want to go on record. I was accused of just doing this for the profit purposes. Um, my personal testimony has been that the Lord led me into this back when I was in college. And I've been doing this for 33 years, caring for seniors. And I consider that my ministry. So I just want to go on the record. I've woke up a couple nights and thought hard about that. Thank you. Anybody have any questions or comments for Mr. Paul? I'm Elmer Parlier, Corbin, Kentucky, and I'm a member of the Heron family. Um, there's a lot of redundancy here, but uh, we do have a new commissioner, so uh, I'll step through this as quickly as possible. Uh, we've been trying for a long time. We used to say 22 years. It's 23 now to develop this property. Uh, we've had inquiries about commercial, professional offices, dental offices. We have not had uh, inquiries about residential. Uh, we just don't think the site is residential. One of the aldermen here in uh, town says on his website that he has built 100 residential homes in Farragut. He has not uh, inquired about this property, so he clearly does not uh, think that it, it should be on his list. Uh, we um, think that the two important considerations are what does this development do for the nearby property values and what does it do to the appearance of the entranceway to the city, to the town. And we think it enhances both more than the kind of single family residential that might go on it, which would certainly be uh, I don't know if I want to use the word affordable, but, but more affordable certainly than the surrounding residential development. If you could show that first uh, slide, please, Mark, uh, of the facility from the street. Yeah, that one. Now, that is the slide that we have had and that we've used for discussion purposes, and I think that was the one that we mailed out to the community. I apologize that, that uh, this is slightly different, but substantially the same. This just happens to look a little better, but this got completed after we had uh, given the staff the uh, uh, other view. Um, it would be a 40-unit facility, licensed for 53 residents, maybe something like that, because some people will be couples. Uh, the car roofs will likely not be visible uh, from, from the street because uh, of a berm and the landscaping. Uh, we've had some neighborhood input uh, from uh, Ms. Reeve, our immediate neighbor. Uh, I would point out again that the property does not touch uh, the Cottage Creek facility. It's separated by her property, the detention pond, uh, and some green space there. Um, we had one version, if you'd click one slide please for exhibit two. We put this version out uh, when there was concern by some members of, of the community that the facility didn't look good, so we concealed it more. Uh, that is possible, but this is a very attractive facility in my view. Uh, but uh, Mr. Falk has agreed to take input uh, from uh, neighbors, and uh, we, we uh, are pleased to, to listen to that. Uh, 
let's look at the aerial view, which I think is the next slide. Notice that the driveway there was once drawn in, and then we uh, worked with Cannon and Cannon, uh, Alan Childers in particular, and drew in uh, this driveway that complies with stopping distances and visibility distances. Uh, so that's why that is modified. This view is substantially the same but slightly different and a little bit better. So one criticism that came up early is we don't want such a facility. So fundamental to our thinking was, if not this, what? Could I have the next slide, please? Uh, mm, did we, do we have one of the, of the uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, and this, these houses could be built under current zoning. Some have considered that a scare tactic. Um, we don't intend it to be that way, but we do intend it to be illustrative of what could happen. Um, it's always easy to find fault with what's offered. It's more difficult to come up with an alternative, and so that's why we show this view. Um, Some objections that have been raised are concerns about ambulance visits. Uh, visits. Uh, we're told that that would not be much greater, if any, than just the normal population. Resident driving, uh, probably only one or two of the residents will have cars. Uh, employee traffic is quite light. Residential foot traffic, uh, these folks mostly stay uh, in the uh, inner courtyard area for their walking, we're told. Um, Alan Childers uh, looked into the Insta ITE, the Institute of Transportation Engineers, a 17,000 member international organization, and uh, says that the traffic might be a little greater than single family, but that it will be in the middle of the day, not the rush hour period. That usually the stress of traffic in any situation is in the morning uh, rush hour time, and there might be three or four more cars as a result of this facility. So nominal uh, 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 increase in that regard. Uh, the lighting fixture we have mentioned, uh, could you show the night, uh, uh, yeah, this view, when I sent that to Mark the first time, he discarded it because he thought it was poorly developed, but that is actually a photograph of another of Mr. Falk's facilities at night. Um, and could you click to the garbage truck? I got this picture from Tennessee Trash, pretty small truck, twice a week. So our summary is that it is an excellent uh, balance, a trade-off, if you will, between pure commercial and pure residential. It is more residential. Uh, we think it's an excellent compromise. Um, I've already made the point that we think it enhances property values more. Um, so I think those are all the points that I would care to make to you. Is there anything I've... Oh, this, clear, this is from the KGIS, and I personally entered those notes. Uh, the site developments is, is the portion at the bottom. Uh, Ms. Reeves' property, the old farmhouse, and the cottage she has built for her artwork nearby. And you can see that the detention pond, uh, which I believe is 200 feet across, separates us from the Gillette, Zahn, uh, and Kidd properties. And then the green space uh, is approximately 200 feet also. So uh, to illustrate where uh, the separation is. And of course there's landscaping as is illustrated here. Do I have any questions or comments? I have a question. Um, the rendering 
of your property doesn't show signage of the facility? Are you intending isn't, isn't to there a sign there? Yeah, it, it does. Oh, um, I didn't see it. It's right at the driveway. It, it would meet the sign uh, requirements oh, for that zoning. It's it's it. okay. it's just at the entrance only, not on Campbell Station Road. Uh, keep in mind, all we're really looking at is the land use designation, not necessarily this project. Although, you know, we certainly all are familiar with this project, but. I think the question is whether that use designation is the appropriate designation for that property. More questions or comments from anyone? Is there planned landscaping on the uh, side of the Reeves property? Yes. And we'll look at all that if this comes back before you. Uh, you know, a lot of the rendering may or may not be what ends up getting approved if this project moves forward, based on what happens with the rezoning and land use designation. It better be pretty close for what I paid the architect. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> it has set expectations. I have a question, Mark. That maybe some of the others already know the answer to uh, in light of the you're looking at the uh, revisions to the zoning uh, is it appropriate to consider changing to the civic institutional rather than the uh, s1 well the civic institutional is the the this particular item this is the land the future land use map the S1 will be for the next item dealing with the actual zoning map. So as far as the civic institutional land use designation, you know, that, that is fine the way the ordinances are currently written. Um, but the next item, you know, if, if they wanted to uh, rezone it to S1, obviously that would be dependent on the S1 district uh, text amendments uh, being finalized through the Board of Mayor and Alderman. They did pass on first reading last Thursday. So we can go ahead tonight and make a decision on that without the second reading being passed? Yeah, yeah, you could do that. I mean, pending the obvious approval of the text amendments. Uh, if that for some reason doesn't go through, then of course you couldn't you know, rezone it. Um, okay. I mean, well, you could rezone it to S1. Talking? You just couldn't, they couldn't develop what they wanted to develop on the property. What well, you're talking about the zoning now? No. No, no, we're just talking about the future land use designation. It's currently very low density residential, and they're requesting it to be civic institutional. Any more questions or comments on, on this part? If you have a question, please come up to the microphone. Tell us who you are and give us your address. Uh, my name is Debbie Rains, and I apologize. The allergies have set in deep here, but I'll try to speak clearly. Um, I live at 11324 Gates Mill Drive in Sweetbriar. And I'm not sure this is the appropriate time to be addressing what I wanted to address, but I've had the experience of both working and living next to facilities very similar in size to this, and just wanted to uh, give what my experience has been with that. Would this be the appropriate time to state that, or would it be later in the meeting if we're talking just about zoning? Land use. It's a land use. So okay, right. okay. Um, and I'm, uh, like I said, I'm not really wanting to discuss yay or nay, but um, it is kind of a unique perspective that I have both worked in a facility like this and I've also lived next to it. 
And um, I have to say that both have been positive experiences. Um, the, the facility that I worked in was uh, 36 rooms, so it's very similar in size. Uh, we probably didn't have 50 people. I think we had about 44 because we had very few double rooms. Um, as far as traffic, which I know has been a concern for many people, it is minimal. You have a very small staff in a facility like this. Um, I, I would, you know, I was going to say under 20, but I think from what I've learned, it's even less than that for this facility. I don't remember coming and going during our shift changes. I don't remember ever even waiting for another car. I just pulled out, went up to the stop sign and took off. As far as the, um, re the reaction of the community, uh, everyone was very glad we were there. And uh, the way our facility was set up, we were in between two streets in a residential neighborhood, and we actually had houses on the other side of the street. They, you know, they looked at us all the time. And I don't remember ever having one person say, gee, we wish you weren't there. They, they saw us as a valuable part of the community. And um, that's one thing that has bothered me a little bit about this whole thing is it's like, well, you know, we don't want that old people's home. You know, what are we talking about? Let's value the older people in our community and give them a lovely place to live that might be closer to their family. And as far as this being the entrance to our community, I can't think of anything better. I, th I think it's a great use of the, of the, the land. As far as living close to a facility, and of course I would be living close to it, not next to it. I'll be closer to the Chili's, but we won't go down that road again. Um, but um, I, it was almost zero impact. We, we lived in a small apartment complex at the time. I think we had 24 units in our building. There was much more traffic from our apartment complex than we ever had dealing with the nursing home being there. There wasn't any extra noise. I, you know, I mean, these people are not noisy. You're not going to have to worry about wild parties down there. And um, I, just based on my experience in both working in that facility and also in living next to a facility, almost identical size, um, I think people will be pleasantly surprised that this would actually be a benefit to our community and not a hindrance. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Uh, Carol Christopherson, 11320 Gates Mill Drive. Uh, we hear uh, every ambulance and fire truck that leaves the Campbell Station Road facility uh, as it shoots down the, the road to the freeway. Um, and it's not going to be a, any problem that this assisted living facility is going to create for ambulances and fire trucks. And I'd like for that to get off the table as being an issue. It isn't. Thank you very much. Anybody else? I just want to say thanks to Mr. Falk for making his life work to help the elderly. And I think whoever made that those insinuations about you is, is just, it's disgraceful. And this is a beautiful facility. If I was elderly, I would love to live there. and. You know, God bless you for doing it. And I mean, people don't seem to have problems with schools and playgrounds and kids being out. It's fine. But when it comes to the elderly, for whatever reason, someone's point about, you know, why do we want to live by an old folks home? I think it's just disgraceful. And I just think this is beautiful. And God bless you. And thank you for doing this. Hi, my name is Susan Reeve. And uh, uh, my property is right next to it, the 408 Heron Road. And um, I, I guess I will be the most impacted by this facility. And um, I, I guess in, in my way of thinking, uh, a vacant lot doesn't really do anybody any good. Um, it just, it's to me the same as an abandoned building or an a, a empty home. And so in, uh, we're asking an awful lot of this little piece of property, I think, 
to make a bridge from the residential to commercial to all the surrounding recreational. And I, I think what they're proposing to do is, is a pretty good way of doing that. Uh, is it perfect? Oh, no. But it certainly is better than, I think, keeping it empty. And it's certainly better than a Sonics or a Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. So, you know, from, from my, my perspective and, and looking at my property, I think uh, one of the reasons why I'm so drawn to this area is his, his history. And yet, you know, here we are. We're living in the 21st century. What are we going to do with this? And this area is a very communal area. So, I, you know, um, they, they have been very accommodating and, you know, talking about a tree barrier for the noise and the lighting. And, and you know, let's face it, Campbell Station Road is a busy, busy road. There's a lot of noise there just by itself. So, yeah, that will be certainly helpful. And I think with the landscaping, uh, it will certainly add to the overall um, of, of, of the Founders Park and all of that. And so... Um, yeah, I, I guess I look at this as a good thing. So okay. thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Anybody else questions or comments? Do you have I'm just right, thinking about time to make a motion because all we're talking about is the land use plan right, right. now. Mm -hmm. and the next, we already just discussed the next item. In Go ahead with the motion. Okay, the motion, motion is, to, uh, is to amend the 2012 comprehensive land use plan Parcel 117, tax map 442, located at the intersection of North Campbell Station Road and Heron Road, approximately 4.5 acres, from very low density residential to civic institutional. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, now we'll move along to continue kind of the discussion uh, with the rezoning. Um, I make a motion to uh, yeah. rezone it from R2 to S1 <laughs> and recommend that thing. to the yeah. Board of Mayor and Alderman. Comments. I have some comments. Okay. Mark, as I see it right now, we're voting on S1 as it is right now, which is 50 foot setbacks uh, and uh, the no elderly housing in S1. Right, yep. And right. so how can we vote on an ordinance, a rezoning ordinance that hadn't been approved by the Board of Mayor and Alderman? Well, S1's an existing zoning. Well, district. I know it is, but it's not, it, it doesn't allow this facility. Well, that's it's the thing. If, if those text amendments don't get passed through the Board of Mayor and Alderman, and they already have passed unanimously at first reading. I so understand that. So I anticipate that. they'll pass at second reading. But if for, if for some reason they didn't, then, you know, the, the property would be, I mean, if that rezoning would also have to go through the Board of Mayor and Alderman. So, you know, I, my guess is if the text amendments don't get, don't pass, they'll probably withdraw the rezoning request to S1 would be my guess. But we could certain, I mean, it could certainly go through a formal recommendation by the Planning Commission with the understanding that the text amendments are in progress and for them to be able to do their project with the S1 designation those would have to go through at second reading. My motion was going to be contingent on the second reading of the current okay. uh, resolutions before the Board of Mayor and Alderman. Okay so if the current resolution does not pass on second amendment nothing took place tonight is that what we're saying? On the rezoning, right. Back with another request. They'd have to come back, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Comprehensive land use. Okay, so it wouldn't automatically be rezone R1 or S1. Okay. That's right, because he's placing the condition on the Making recommendation. Consistent with what we recommended to the Board of Mayor and Alderman and what they've taken the first step on the action in. Right, I know they have. Okay, yeah, we do that. We, we've done that frequently with rezones because we try to work with an applicant to let things go concurrent sometimes just to help their timeline. So, you know, obviously they're not going to proceed if the text amendments don't go through. And Tom well, we, Hale doesn't have any problem with it being done this way? 
I haven't talked with him about it, but we've done we've done other rezonings and text amendments in the past. You you know, concurrent, we've done that frequently. So I understand the the first uh, motion that was made concerning the revision of the 2012 land use plan huh. would not be impacted in any form or fashion. It would still go from lo very low density yes. to civic institutional, yes, correct? That's right. Yes. And then this motion that you're thinking about now, Mr. Uh, St. Clair, is that uh, we approve or recommend to the Board of Mayor and Alderman that the zoning be revised from R2 to S1. Is that correct? Contingent on that, what's before the Board for Second Reading, on which is S1 what we recommended. Being a, uh, approved uh, right. for this type of a facility. Right. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. That's right. Okay. Motion. Can you repeat your motion? Well, motion is to. Um, you know, recommend the, you know, the rezoning, <laughs> the resolution that's in our package. Resolution PC 16-56. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> From, <laughs> recommend the R2 to S1, uh, contingent on the S1 language being modified to what's before the board for second, coming up for second reading. In other words, what we've already recommended for the S1 modification in the text of the so what we have, you know, for everybody, we're changing. We've already recommended the S1 zoning language change, incorporating a lot of comments and, from us, and that's on, already been passed that's by passed first reading first by reading, Board yes. Mayor Alderman. That's right. So I'm trying to hit that moving target by recommending that we approve this rezoning request based on that being approved on second reading, the revised wording. Yes. That's right. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> is, that, is that the correct way for you? Fine, I understand. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank one you. Thing, uh, one thing I'll Can note that for anybody that's <coughs> interested as far as the process goes, what the Planning Commission does on a recommendation, on a rezoning is just makes a recommendation. So this goes to the Board of Mayor and Alderman uh, for first reading. Uh, I, I don't know. It'll probably be the first meeting in April will be my guess. Um, and it's the second Thursday in April. Um, and then uh, then they will we'll act on it at first reading, and then two weeks after that, typically, you'll get, it'll go before them for second reading. So that's – and that would be the end of the zoning map amendment process. So. So at their next meeting, they'd be handling the revision to the S It'd second be, reading of the S-1. That's next Thursday. Thursday. Yes, and then probably the then first meeting in April, be my that guess. that would be the first reading of this rezoning. Will be the zoning map Contingent with that first revised. reading. Yeah. One kind of technical question. Just everyone <laughs> on that. <laughs> One little technical question. Is it common that the, uh, your report to us says approximately four and a half acres and then yeah that's that's four often. six stages is that okay i mean yes it doesn't have to be that's really what it is it's uh at this point it's approximately 4.5 acres until they get the more detailed information with the survey and the site plan but it's going to be close to that in the the resolution oh, says yeah. 4.68 doesn't okay. matter that those are, okay Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on now to item actually number seven, uh, discussion of the Farragut Architectural Design Standards Design Review Checklist. Um, yeah, what? Let me let them clear out here for a minute, and then we'll start back with this. Y'all want to stay for the workshop later? You're welcome to. Okay. All right. Well. Yeah. Look at it as a tutorial. Sorry. You can look at it as a tutorial. 
<laughs> the uh, architectural design standards we adopted back in March of 2015, uh, it's a pretty large document, as you all may recall. We are going to make copies for everybody, and apologize we haven't done that yet. One of the things we were waiting on was to get the, this checklist developed and finalized. Um, the need for having a checklist was pretty apparent to the staff when we started trying to apply the architectural design standards because they're so involved and there's so many things to think about. It was a lot easier for us to have uh, a breakdown of the standards so that we didn't forget something basically. Um, and so we, uh, the staff initially developed a, a pretty good checklist in-house to help us with the review of projects. Um, but then we uh, contracted out with Winter and Company, the same consultants that developed our design standards, to come up with a prettier <laughs> uh, uh, checklist document um, that uh, could help aid in the application and administration of these standards. So I, we did include the entire checklist in your packet. Uh, it's a pretty big checklist in comparison with other checklists of the town. Um, it has three basic sections. The first section talks about the design review process, and we talked a lot about that when we were developing the standards, as you all may remember. Um, the second section is really the breakdown, the, the meat and potatoes of the checklist. Um, it breaks down each section of both the site design and the building design guidelines uh, and asks an applicant uh, to make sure that their project is addressing each of those standards. And then, then the staff uh, provides a review of their assessment of whether the applicant has satisfactorily addressed the standards in section three. One of the reasons we wanted to present this to you, it was first of all, show you the checklist, make sure you're happy with it, how it's turned out, and you know, get your feedback if you have any suggestions or thoughts. Um, and then also to, to kind of get a sense for whether you in terms of what is included in packets in the future um, and the staff's assessment of d different projects, do you want us to include our comments, uh, you know, all in all of section three? In other words, the findings that the staff has developed for each of the sections um, and whether each of the subsections have addressed uh, the design standards or would you prefer to just basically you know have a summary page from the staff similar kind of to what we do currently in our in our comment response letters I'll have per section per standard 1.21 please blah you know that kind of thing so that would the recommendation page would be similar to that where basically the staff summarizes the project's compliance or lack of compliance with certain design standards. Um, and I don't know that you can give me an answer to that necessarily tonight. We may just have to do some trial and error with it and see what seems to work the best. Um, I would like to minimize, uh, you know, the amount of paper if possible. What we're envisioning the applicants to do is to actually uh, provide a digital submittal. This is in a Word document, and so they can actually go through and, and you know, address this and then email it to us electronically so that we don't have to print out this large checklist with every project. Um, so, but I guess what we were trying to, to make sure about is if you had, at this point anyway, a preference as to how you would want the staff's summary to be provided to you. Um, again, this could be something that evolves over time, but probably what we're leaning toward is just is just the recommendation sheet, and then if there are standards in there that the project maybe has not in the staff's opinion 
uh, addressed, then we can summarize those and indicate what the issues are for each standard. Well, I guess that uh, was kind of what I was envisioning. Or we would get a summary. Yeah. Uh, exactly. That would uh, basically broken down by the chapter and the subsection, but just really go into the exceptions of where they wasn't met and your rationale on why that's appropriate or up for discussion or why it's not appropriate. Yeah. And, and uh, pretty much use the recommendation page and just yeah. break it out. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, that's kind of what I thought would work too. Because I, I got to thinking, you know, when looking at this, that if you were getting comments from each staff member, plus if you're going to give us, the, I'll say the self-assessment <laughs> that came with the application, that's a lot of paper. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and then well, I'd rather see the, I'll say the consensus of the staff <laughs> in the recommendation rather than. And if there are standards where, person. where we're not really sure about, you know, sometimes there's a gray area as to whether they feel they've addressed it. We feel, eh, I don't know, maybe not. We'll, of course, err on the cautious side, include that in the summary. You know, we would only, you know, include the, the deficiencies that we clearly believe are deficient per the standards or any areas that may be a kind of a gray area so that you all can we can get your feedback and, and you can make the final determination so but yeah we can we can do it that that's way. my opinion so that's, how does everybody else feel about that that's pretty much what is yes, right right you envision that uh, this uh, chapter I mean section 3 would be computerized as well um <coughs> mark yes I, I think that this whole thing needs to be di digitized uh, and handled electronically yeah it certainly can be yeah and then I would think that that would uh, be good to have it available for us to see yeah. here and then have your summary as your suggestion as well yeah and not have all the paper it out. Well, we'd like to get to a point someday to actually have uh, digital packets, you know, right. and to email you all the packets. So oh, uh, also on this, Mark, not every project will use every one of these points. That's correct. Yeah, and there is an NA column uh, in there where an applicant can indicate that. And when you sit down with them for the first time, you will point out the ones that they need. De definitely to get back with you on well that? it just depends on uh, you know it, it just depends uh, whether the applicant reaches out to us and you know how much feedback there I can foresee some people complaining about having to go through all of these many many things when they don't apply to them sometimes. yeah yeah we would do that if somebody's got a real simple project then we would we would say you know you may this is these are our this is our checklist for the architectural design standards but you you probably would only need to look at these sections most likely for for what you're doing digitizing it enables you to put in the applicable checklist items yeah somebody that's reviewing it or doing it for the submittal doesn't have to fumble through a whole bunch of oil and stuff Yeah, we think they did a good job with the checklist. It is uh, lengthy, but it is very thorough, and I think it will help the staff and the applicants to make sure that uh, they're not missing something when they submit or we review. Uh, this checklist has not. We've, like I say, we developed an in-house checklist. It was pretty similar. It just wasn't quite as flashy, uh, but it was. It basically was the same thing. Is this something you bought or created or what? Yeah, we we had a contract with them um, to provide this uh, for us. Part of that overall package yes, of what uh, they yeah. they did for the architectural review. Yeah, it was one of the uh, deliverables from from this project. Yeah. All right. We didn't spend any extra money. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Mark, I have a question not related to this, uh -huh. but the building on the corner of uh, Parkside and Camel Station, 
Does that did that sign go before the visual VRRB? The orange and black one. Parkside and Campbell's is it Stanton Optical. Is that the one you're talking about? I think so. Yeah. The wall sign. No, the wall signs typically just are reviewed by the staff on those. That meet the color common colors in the architectural review standard. Um. Yeah, I mean that's uh, you know that orange leaf uh, business that was there before was pretty similar. That's a building that unfortunately doesn't have uh, compatibility like you have across the street. You know where you know where the uh, mellow mushroom is, and you've got kind of a theme of consistency there. Um, Actually, I wish the Einstein sign would be changed to more channel letters, but, you know, I think it would probably probably do better if it were more consistent with the optical kind of sign instead of the box, but that's what that's what they had requested. Passed for that. Time but we'll, has passed for that. Uh, Time has passed for that coming about. For the Einstein? Well, for the consistency of it. Oh, yeah, that's something that we we need to have a discussion with the VRB about, I think, is these centers that are multiple tenants. Some some of the problems are these older centers and that have kind of had a, a lack of consistency prior to the design standards and how to address those. I think that would be a good conversation with the VRB because I think signage and trying to be develop consistent themes um, are very important to the appearance of the building as much as <coughs> can be as much as the, the building materials or colors and all that so anybody else have any questions or comments on this for Mark Uh, then we're ready to move on to uh, item number six, discussion on creating a mixed-use neighborhood commercial center. And we're going to take a little field trip to the back of the room for this. Let me just go over just a few basic things first, just to, uh, I guess, give you some thoughts that we have and then some general comments and questions about what, what it is we're doing and what we're talking about. Just try to help make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, but this item is uh, something that we discussed briefly in January, and then uh, it was one of the uh, priorities of the Board of Mayor and Alderman to look into the development of a mixed-use neighborhood commercial district. Um, if you look at on page 28 of our land use plan there's an actual land use description for the mixed use neighborhood and it talks a little bit about the intent uses location character um, so it's been in our land use plan since the update in 2012 there's also some language in our design standards about mixed use neighborhood type land uses um, so there's kind of this disconnect between the land use plan and talking about something that we don't currently provide for in our actual regulations. So that's what we're trying to uh, start addressing or looking into. Um, when I was thinking about this uh, a little bit, Ashley and I were thinking about how to tackle this. It's, uh, it's a big topic. There's a lot of things to think about. But uh, we just came up with some basic questions and considerations that were in your packet to try to um, I guess describe what a mixed-use neighborhood typically is uh, are there some you know why would a community want to have a mixed-use neighborhood district um, and that's something that we need to think about tonight if you even want to pursue this I mean that's a that's a question um, if you do, then are there locations in the town where this could actually reasonably be applied? Uh, and then what might it look like? And 
the exercise in the back after we go through this introduction is really designed to get some discussion, some thoughts going about um, what you like or dislike or what are some of the design features and elements of um, maybe certain mixed-use neighborhood developments and, and, you know, to help us, if you do want to pursue this, to help us start crafting some ordinance language so that, you know, we can move this forward uh, and take it through the process. Um, so just in summary, just uh, to cover a few basic things, a mixed-use neighborhood, I want it, you to understand that it's not the same as a mixed-use town center because it people get a little bit confused maybe about that. A mixed-use neighborhood, to me, I grew up in the country out in Greene County, and we had little country stores uh, that were in different parts of your community. And to me, that is kind of a mixed-use neighborhood in the old school manner. Uh, it was an area where the community came together. Uh, they, you know, were able to do certain, uh, pick up certain products uh, without having to go all the way to town, you know, um, those kinds of things. Um, in the context of a more urban type mixed use neighborhood, it would be really targeted toward um, errands that people could reasonably do on foot or bicycle. You know, if you just need to pick up a, a loaf of bread or you need to go get a haircut or whatever, you know, that you could just you know, walk down to the little neighborhood, to the little village, and, and you know, do that without having to get in your car. Um, the uses that you see in a mixed-use neighborhood are not going to be as expansive as you would see in a mixed-use town center. The form often is different. It's more residential in appearance, kind of like that lower image there. They almost look like houses, um, maybe with commercial on the ground floor, residential on the second floor. Um, the signage and the lighting can be more, even more toned down than a town center. Um, yeah, you know, those... Well, that would be more of a mixed-use town center. That's a little bigger area. A mixed-use neighborhood may only be a few buildings. Um, it could be just one block. Uh, it uh, is a much smaller uh, area. You know, uh, the, the reason that communities often try to pursue these, and we really don't have a lot of good examples around here, uh, I do think Sequoia Hills has a lot of the ideas of a mixed-use neighborhood. Uh, if you go there, um, they've got that area, a little area of schools and churches and some even some commercial uses kind of in the core of that development. Um, and so the, even though some of the uh, form and the way it's kind of developed over time may not be what we're trying to do here, I think the general thought process is, is consistent with what we're talking about. Um, it uh, can help, you know, provide, I think, a greater sense of overall community because you have different sections of the town where you have these community gathering spaces. Um, so collectively, people have a greater sense of being part of a community. Um, it uh, typically you see higher property values uh, around these these areas. Um, it provides for um, some things that millennials, for example, are have shown to be more interested in. Um, they're interested in uh, not just buying a house, but they're interested in buying a place, uh, some place that they you know, don't have to drive to, to, to do certain things that's convenient. Um, and uh, that's what the mixed-use neighborhood is trying to do uh, on a smaller scale than the mixed-use town center. Um, the, uh, as far as, you know, where one of these could go in the town, 
Um, obviously, that's if you want to pursue this, that's going to be driven by the community. It's not where I think it needs to go or even where the land use plan uh, shows that it should go. There are certain areas that we've circled here. One of them's not in the town. <clears throat> but that was these areas were identified as possible candidates for a mixed-use neighborhood when we updated the land use plan in 2012. You've got the area down near Concord and Turkey Creek. You've got the Ingalls area kind of in the center of town, uh, North Watt Road near Mayor Bob Leonard Park, and then you got the McPhee Roundabout area. Um, from the staff's perspective, uh, you know, you need to have an area that has adequate infrastructure to support this kind of development. Um, and you probably need to have either an existing or a planned gathering place or gathering space like a park a library, something where the community comes together um, and you can kind of evolve from that from that land use uh, into this little neighborhood node. So, you know, I would focus on looking at our parks, what's around our parks, are there opportunities to, uh, you know, provide for these kind of mixed-use neighborhood nodes there. Um, I don't envision more than three or probably more than three in the town uh, and probably none in the eastern part because they would start to compete with the mixed-use town center, the area in purple there. And that's just basically a mixed-use neighborhood on steroids. So uh, it's just a much larger um, uh, mixed-use type of development. Um, and that's what we envision kind of in this area around Kingston Pike and, and Camel Station Road. So. These neighborhood mixed uses, maybe out at McPhee Roundabout, I think would be a, a possible candidate. I think across from Mayor Bob Leonard Park, somewhere over there might be a good a good uh, area. And that could also serve, those, each of those locations could serve as, as gateways uh, because they are near gateways into the town. Uh, you got people coming in under the railroad uh, there at McPhee uh, off of Boyd Station. Um, and then you got, of course, people coming up from uh, North Watt Road uh, from the interstate into the town. Um, some of the area there on Concord Road, of course, a lot of that's not in the town. Um, but that is another you know, possibility over there. Um, and there may be others. What about the area down at um, Watt Road Extension? Now, there's some property down there that several years ago there was talk about developing. Yeah, Is yeah, maybe somewhere in the Watt Road area. Now, again, I'm looking at is there an existing use that where people congregate? Is there a big park? You know, you want to kind of start, you want to start with something that is, has, a, is kind of a destination. Is there, are there, you know, uh, residential developments around it where people are within a reasonable walking distance of this mixed-use neighborhood. Uh, you don't want it to be, you know, you want to have a, a, a sufficient residential density within half a mile or so anyway uh, of the uh, mixed-use neighborhood because those, you know, any of those non-residential uses will need the support of people that live around that as well as people that might come into the community to visit the splash pad at Fee Park or something like that. Um, so that's important to have that kind of um, surrounding plan of development. Um, th Is it possible that the uh, Swan property, the... Well, the you know, that Canadian? could be, could be, yeah. It could be. Now, it's a little bit of a challenge it, you know, when you're talking about a larger commercial building like what I think has been envisioned, that could be a little bit of a challenge to, but it could be maybe a hybrid, you know. Uh, you've got that open space um, park zone there along Union Road that could potentially be a little pocket community park area. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's a possible area where you could see something or along uh, Everett Road, 
somewhere. Um, the bottom line with the town, with the, the staff, home, yeah. was that we didn't want to go through the process of creating a zoning district that would never get used because there weren't any locations for it or there didn't seem to be a desire to have it in, in our community. I see a lot of value in it personally, um, but I'm a planner, and so I like these kinds of things. I think they help really build a sense of community. Um, um, but, you know, it's, it's ultimately the community's decision as to whether Mark, you know, they want that. No. I didn't hear where Annette was talking about. And you said it was more of a center. Well, you were talking about the Swan property, right? Oh. Or, no, way. no, Roseanne was talking about the Swan property. It's better a few minutes ago. <laughs> oh, okay. What about the property on North Camel Station Road where the uh, golf shop just went out of business? Where the, which, what went out of business? Where the golf shop. Shop. Oh, on the no north side. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a use that is typically surrounded by residential, a pretty. Well, it will be if those apartments well, yeah. get in. They're, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's some possibility. It, it is probably a little too close to the interstate. Um, but, you know, it... Uh, I think I mentioned this to you when you and I were talking earlier this week. The uh, little center that is on Kingston Pike as you turn off to Old Stage Road which has Louise's Fitness Center and the, um, mm -hmm. there's a couple Marco's of restaurants. Marco's Pizza. Right, the pizza yeah. and the Chinese and um, yeah. a gift shop and all. Is that the sort of thing? Or? Well, people can walk to that, that's true. And but the form would be very different. It. In other words, if you if you was a true mixed-use neighborhood, at least what I would envision, is you couldn't hardly tell the difference between it being commercial versus residential. It would look like a house. Well, that's where I, we'll talk yeah. about that when we look at some of these images back here. I know from a general concept, when I, when I looked at this, and the first thing I had to do was get in my mind the distinction between it and the town center. Yes, <laughs> and, I, one. and I but think I, that's But big. I know I've experienced it personally because I see it uh, in other places, but it is like what you said, Sequoia Hills. Yes. And a direct example I've dealt with is where my son lives in Decatur, Georgia. And it's an older neighborhood, mature trees, yeah. millennials mm -hmm. and children. But you can walk three blocks, and, that, and there's there are schools, there's there are restaurants, kind of a circle area with several restaurants and shops. But it's all pedestrian, bike-type traffic for the most part. It's kind of like but if you take... You get that real community center, you don't get any feel of commercial. When you come up a or like a residential street and... All of a sudden, you come to, you know, little, yeah, almost town square, exactly. mini town square with with some yeah, shops it would and not trees appear and a park to be in the commercial. middle of it. And, and then you can off form. into some more residential, and it's it doesn't come across as commercial. <laughs> yeah, it that scream would be commercial. The but I and so I have when I crosswalk that to to our town, I'm trying to scratch my head on where that would be. <laughs> yeah, that area. That's an area. That's a potential area. I'm a little bit concerned with the with the sewage treatment plant down there, as far as it being a Callaway House on Concord residential. Because there's a lot of. I mean, what we're talking about is a lot of traffic through these areas, and it's anything yeah. but residential. I keep scratching my head on. It's a great concept, but where? <laughs> yeah, and I think that's for something where we are at this point in time in our development of the town. Have a lot or of maybe it's out there in redevelopment time, or when, or something. But I don't. I keep scratching my head on. on we yeah. can create a great district, but it'll have limited use. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, and that's I think a very important question to try to answer because like it's, you've touched on a number of things that I was thinking about there too. But that's. I would say if you looked at Concord Road or some of uh, another area, 
that I would have a open meeting with with the residents in that area to see if they want it. Well, now we're and not the same thing at the end of McPhee. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, and obviously they would. There, somebody would have to request to, to do this. Um, but um, yeah, and we're not talking about Old Concord or anything that's not in the town. That's not. Yeah, we're not talking about that. Well, you know, no. they're gonna have an opinion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And we would want to, you know, get their input if if we pursued this. Uh, you know, if there are certain areas that that we're, you know, we see as serious candidates. But I think certainly around McPhee. And probably around Mayor Bob Leonard, somewhere out there in that area, would be potential candidates, because um, you do have a lot of residential um, in that area. Um, now the area there, along, let's see, Ingalls and Smith Road in that area. I don't know. That may be a redevelopment type driven um, so I'm not I'm not really sure about that area I think uh, if those that develop along those lines it still will never, would probably never have the true feel of what you're looking for it may get halfway there or something but I don't with the amount of traffic and other things too, it will never get that that little neighborhood store you were talking about or the what I'm vision or have experienced I'm not yeah. opposed to it. I'm just trying to think. I think, honestly, the one the ones that Mayor Bob Leonard and um, McPhee and, and maybe across from Anchor uh, all would, could have some of those components and uh, may do okay um, because there's a whole lot of people that go, I know, to Bob Leonard Park and, and uh, McPhee Park, and there's quite a bit of residential around each of those as well as anchor um, and then you, of course everything up in the northeast part of the town would be handled with the mixed-use town center so there really wouldn't be a need for a mixed-use neighborhood in that area so um, you're always going to have people who are going to object to the idea of anything commercial being in their subdivision yeah. Or around their subdivision. I, um, what? <laughs> well, maybe what we could do is just uh, go to the back and uh, just get some your all's thoughts on some of the images that we have. It's kind of an image preference um, exercise, I suppose. We, I would have hoped we would have had more public here. <laughs> But uh, anyway, we put together some images and tried to categorize different components of what, what you may see in a mixed-use neighborhood just to kind of get your feel for which of the images you like the best. So I think we're going to give everyone four stickers. And on each of the, each of the uh, sheets up there, if you could just put a dot beside the one that you you kind of like for whatever reason the most uh, they're all somewhat interrelated but what we're trying to do is to get some feel for the kind of form that you all might be interested in and this could be if we end up not pursuing a mixed-use neighborhood zoning district I mean that's fine uh, we could apply the your all thoughts to a mixed-use town center just as easily um, You could have one, okay. yeah. You could certainly have one, yeah. Now, it'd just be a zoning district for one. I mean, it'd be a lot of work to create a zoning district uh, for just one, but you could certainly just have one, and that may be all that there's, uh, you know, interest in, in doing or the market is ready for at this point, you know. So... Sure. I'm looking at these pictures in here for the most part these oh yeah here that these these were uh, redevelopments of old towns and we're not yeah. talking about that here so it becomes a bit more difficult situation yeah 
it's a little tougher. Uh, in some ways, it's an advantage to try to do something from from scratch, and then in other ways, it's a maybe a disadvantage because people are not used to that plan of development, or there's a lot of mis there's a lot of misunderstanding about what it is, and people are afraid it's just going to be another gas station uh, or something like that. And I'm not against gas stations, but that's entirely yeah, that's not a, what the mixed-use neighborhood is about. <laughs> that's what I think of a convenience store. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's what a lot of people think of. That's not, at least from my perspective, what I'm talking about with the mixed-use neighborhood. It would be more like cafe, a cafe, a little tiny market, some, you know, little outdoor seating area where, where people could just walk to after a game. You know, you could go over, you know, have a, sandwich or whatever cup of coffee in the morning uh, you know and and then walk home ideally I mean that's kind of what we're talking about that's why yeah mm -hmm. and that's why it's important to like with Renaissance to try to to it would have been better to try to blend that more with old stage hills um, yeah, and I'm sure Noah would probably would would like that. But it was, you know, it's a lot of this is a there's a, a perception that you know commercial is bad for the residents, and it just really depends on how you do it and, and what it entails. So uh, with that, I guess we'll I think Market Vision's to the back. a place where you go in and everybody knows your name. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. It's kind of like the old country the stores. <laughs> <laughs> that are no more, unfortunately. Yeah. So we we can go to the back. We'll get you some stickers and. Uh